good morning today in disaster management we are going to learn about early warning a disaster early warning uh, system or you know uh, the outline of the you know uh, today's lesson will be first we will uh, you know start with a you know, brief history of disasters in india agencies for monitoring and uh, assessment of natural hazards type of natural hazards early warning elements of early warning systems and needs then early warning systems in natural disaster case studies uh, and we will discuss about various case studies of uh, with you know success of the you know early warning system that has been uh, taken up okay now uh, india has a you know very very age old history of you know uh, records of uh, disasters that has been uh, you know hampering the development and the peace and creating costs and grief and misery among the populations okay just hold on so uh, the history of india is going back uh, like very very back uh, if you see uh, we have a very wide range of uh, uh, disasters that has been coming to our country and uh, like taking from floods earthquakes cyclones landslides forest fire um uh, you know and tsunamis uh, have been coming time and again and hampering the uh, general course of life in uh, among the people all right so uh, like major disasters uh, that is known to india like i will just you know give you a general categorization i might uh, you know miss out few of them but there could be more okay so uh yeah so when we are talking about a uh, disaster uh, known his in the indian history is like bangla uh, bengal earthquake so it was in it goes way back about in you know 1737 then kangra earthquake in 1905 uh, bihar earthquake in 1934 uh, then lathur earthquake in 1993 gujarat earthquake 2001 kashmir earthquake 2005 indian uh, ocean uh, tsunami uh, that has uh, happened in you know 2004 december uh, then bengal cyclone uh, in 18 uh, you know uh, 64 maharashtra cyclone 1882 uh, then uh, andhra pradesh cyclone in 1977 odisha super cyclone in 1999 uh, uh, for calicut cyclone 
um, you know, uh, Koringa um, a cyclone in 18. 39 and so on so uh, and then uh, if you see on the you know extreme uh, towards the you know your right side you will see that it is about uh, you know each of uh, uh, these major disasters had claimed quite a lot of fatality so uh, if you see in you know uh, bengal earthquake in you know nine in 1737 that claimed uh, that was a fatality was of, of about 13, uh, you know, about 3 lakh people were displaced or dead or in, injured. In, in totality, they were, uh, the fatality was there. Then uh, when Earth, Latur earthquake uh, happened, uh, if you see, uh, it was like 7,928 people died and 3, 000, over 3,000 people who were injured, gravely injured. In Kangra earthquake, more than 22,000 people. It, here, I have given in 20,000 people who had died, but uh, like about 22,000 people, uh, 20, 22,000 people were dead in Kangra earthquake. Uh, and imagine it was way back in 1905 where population density was also less. So in the pop uh, being uh, less dense populated, population being less, not, there were not uh, no high rise buildings in, you know, uh, Kangra earthquake. So it was, Kangra is a, you know, a hill station. Uh, in Himachal Pradesh, now Himachal, that was uh, in that time it was part of Punjab. So uh, uh, Punjab province. Okay. So in that time, uh, when the population was less, uh, there were no high-rise construction. Still, it had claimed such na large number of people. Uh, then Gujarat earthquake, being in a you know recent time in 2001, it claimed immediate uh, death toll went to about 20,000 people. And many more uh, uh, structures were destroyed and destruction happened. Then uh, in Kashmir earthquake, if you see, uh, it has the, that toll had gone to up, uh, up to about 86,000. That is an official data, but it, the death uh, toll has gone beyond because not only earthquake came, uh, the life, the, la uh, the triggered landslide and flash floods, which came along with it, also claimed a lot of life in that way. Okay, then we have uh, Indian Ocean tsunami uh, claiming uh, because this is a, this uh, tsunami started from uh, uh, you know uh, in Indonesia an island uh, on twenty fourth of December uh, it happened and uh, the uh, the it triggered it, it happened because of the earthquake it triggered tsunami so twenty fourth December. 2004, uh, the tsunami uh, tsunami was because of the earthquake, which was uh, of a very high Richter scale of about you know seven point uh, sorry nine point uh, seven Richter scale, which strike uh, you know hit uh, Indonesia and claimed a large. These are very uh, infamous for its, you know, tourism, and that was the time of that was a Christmas Eve, so people were, you know, there for, you know, uh, uh, people were there for, you know, uh, having the festive time, and uh, in that process, they, uh, you know, uh, they were, you know, touristing or they were they were visiting those areas and fell victim uh, to the tsunami so claiming a very large number of people indian ocean tsunami uh, we have talked now bingo uh, bay of bengal cyclone uh, if you see uh, bay of bengal receive cyclone on a you know every year okay and in recent times the cyclones have been turning onto you know cyclonic depression turns out into uh, uh, you know severe storms and you know it start it it has a way back history, from, you know, taking from 1800s to, uh, you know, even in recent times, it has, it, 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 there have been, you know, a large number of cyclones which is coming. But in recent times, the disaster management, like post 2005, where, you know, proper disaster management implementation and guidelines, which has been followed by the states, had made uh, the, the state more disaster resilient and m more they built up their coping capacity to deal with the disasters 
okay uh, specifically predominantly with you know cyclone so their cyclone uh, coping capacity is very well established in you know states uh, which is like Be uh, bengal odisha odisha Beng i would not say bengal so much but uh, odisha andhra they are doing very well when it is coming to disaster management uh, for cyclone so they are doing very well dealing with it okay uh, then you have uh, agencies of monitoring and assessment of natural hazards like when what are the various agencies in our country that uh, you know monitor various natural hazards are like um, indian meteorological mm. department cyclone drought and other mm. meteorological hazards just hold on So, um, Indian Meteorological Department uh, uh, deals with cyclones, droughts, and meteorological meteorological uh, uh, you know drought related like you know uh, heat waves and cold waves. So, uh, in, uh, IMD deals with all uh, climatic uh, weather based uh, disasters or hazards. Central Water Commission deals with you know flood like situations. Geological Survey of India studies about or deals with you know landslides then you have indian national center for ocean information uh, services that is nikos uh, nikos uh, deals with tsunami and defense research and development organization uh, that is drdo uh, deals with snow and avalanches a uh, drdo why because uh, you know uh, it is the Himalayan region where we have the snow uh, clad uh, mountains uh, and these Himalayan uh, mountains we are sharing our borders with the uh, neighboring countries and we need to protect our borders so it is under the administration uh, or under the overlook of you know defense uh, uh, defenses of our country you know my, my defense system of our country so that's why uh, this defense research and development organization deals with snows and avalanche in these regions uh, they do not want the information to go into an unwanted hands okay uh, then when we are coming up to india's vulnerability to disasters if we see uh, you know the you know percentage of losses that uh, you know we can come across is uh, india this vulnerability to disasters is like you know the 57 percent of land is vulnerable to earthquake of these is like 12 percent is vulnerable to severe earthquakes and um, so out of 57 percent it like 12 percent uh, is uh, prone to you know very highly prone to uh, uh, you know severe earthquakes and jolts uh, then 86 percent of land is vulnerable to drought uh, drought being uh you see if you see now uh, india's land is very very much prone to drought even though we are you know have a very uh, good network of you know river system but still our country is prone to drought then uh 12 percent of the land of our country is prone to floods eight percent of our land in our country is you know vulnerable or prone to cyclones so apart from natural disasters some cities in our country are also vulnerable to you know uh urban disasters like you know uh, that can come out because of you know industrial activities or human man-made accidents like you know uh, metropolitan cities and megapolitan cities to be seen uh, very uh, defining in a very clear manner like uh, in delhi delhi we had we have been having uh, fire accidents like upahar cinema hall had a you know uh, a very miserable uh, fire accident um, that in 
uh, way back in 1993 and um, then sorry 1994 and uh, then you have uh, chemical disasters in you know Bhopal uh, city of Madhya Pradesh. It is a city almost in the center of the city. This Bhopal gas tragedy happened. That is uh, also considered as an industrial uh, disaster as well as a chemical disaster because uh, the industry which was you know related to it uh, were dealing with a, a harmful chemical which claimed a large number of life immediately. So then we have, uh, you know, other man-made disasters or, you know, human-induced disasters like, you know, urban flooding. So Delhi faces urban flooding, Mumbai faces urban flooding, Chennai had been facing uh, urban flooding phenomena in recent times. Uh, this is because of, you know, human intervention and human activity interacting with the, you know, uh, or interfering with the natural flow or natural phenomena. The type of uh, natural hazards that we uh, have in our countries are like volcano. We, ha we have, uh, you know, eight volcanoes in our country, out of which only two volcanoes are active. And only one volcano ha has a potential of, you know, erupting in some recent times, but not a very, uh, you know, harmful one. It had been erupting in time and again but it doesn't have a very uh, uh, you know very uh, strong uh, as strong as you know stromboli if you say or you, you know mount etna or fiji if you say all right so uh, then we are prone to floods earthquakes tornadoes and tsunamis so it can be adversely affecting human activities day to day activities and processes and it can occur with you know with any time and without even warning. So we have a very short period of warning system and window of you know informing people. So with warning, that is you know, uh, you know uh, we can do it. Uh, we if we get a prior information or warning or forecast, uh, we will be able to prepare ourselves. Uh, for protecting uh, uh, you know us uh, beforehand or you know taking a shelter or evacuation like uh, in recent times what we have been doing with our cyclone uh, mitigation and you know, activities so early warning now early warning uh, system can be defined as a set of capacity needs to be generated and disseminated timely okay so it needs to be, uh, you know, uh, timely generated and disseminated. Okay. Uh, and a meaningful warning of information of, you know, uh, possible extreme event of disasters like flood, drought, uh, fire, earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, um, other, you know, threats to, uh, you know, human lives uh, or hum human properties. So the purpose of this, uh, you know, information or, you know, warning system is to enable individual and com community and organizations uh, threatened to, uh, you know, uh, who will be threatened to these uh, hazards to prepare and act appropriately uh, and in uh, sufficient time to reduce the possible losses, okay, or risks, okay. Now, elements of early warning, uh, systems uh, early warning system how what are you know elements that we need to have in early warning systems so uh, that we need to have a knowledge for the various risks that are there so in various risk lists what are the hazards that are there what are the elements of risk that are there what are what is the vulnerability of that region you know the um, you know it can be vulnerability demographic factors structural vulnerability and many more then you need to have a monitoring and warning system. Precipitation has happened, or um, of you know uh, small jolts uh, um, that is happening in these areas that you can be recorded. And then level of like in case of floods, you can measure the you know. Uh, water which has been flowing in the river the sedimentation and you know construction activities in the around the rivers river beds then uh you know warning decision so when you need to you know when you are monitoring and also uh, you know assessing the okay now it has you know crossed the line of danger so let's issue a warning 
to the uh, you know uh, people that these are the areas that are going to be affected so warning decision has to be taken by the authority corrective authority who is monitoring and uh, ass assessing the situation then uh, we go to the uh, next system is to dissemination and communication so warning has been issued uh, so only one uh, once who you have decided to issue a warning through radios through you know mass media uh, you know technology and uh, tools we can uh, reach to the masses to warn them that there is an upcoming disaster or hazard through telephone through uh, you know a, 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 a siren or an alarm system which has been installed at a particular place that can you know uh, work as a early warning system then we at the in the end uh, we need to have a response capability so how we are going to respond so early warning messages have been disseminated information has been disseminated now what we need to do is like response so evacuation centers had has had to be you know activated uh, research and rescue teams had to be activated relief goods and teams relief uh, forces has to be activated along with the early warning system okay uh, and they need to be you know informed that what are the areas that is they are supposed to uh, you know expect a number of casualties or number of losses that can come around now need of early warning system so early warning for you know doctor uh, uh, sorry for, so, uh, for uh, early warning for a disaster reduction is a legitimate matter of for public policies at highest national level of two or main reasons are that firstly uh, for, you know need to have a clearly in public safety it has to be public safety in precaution of human life next is it is in uh, uh, it is to for the protection of the national uh, you know resources based on you know productive assets like you know railway tracks uh, agricultural uh, sectors uh, human properties infrastructures that has been built so all various sectors resources that we have that has to be protected uh now early warning for various uh not disasters like what is an earthquake earthquake being you know and uh, the shaking of the uh earth uh, that triggers a uh, violent uh, movement on the uh, surface which can cause collapse of the buildings now collapsing in the of the buildings can result a, a lot of losses so earthquake magnitude ranging from you know uh, 2 to uh, 2.5 uh, magnitude uh, that is an earthquake effect is usually in the green zone or you know uh, the number uh, the intensity uh, or the number of frequency can you know cross about more than lakhs per a day per a year, annual year so it is usually not felt or uh, recorded by the seismographs uh, then more than 2.5 to 5.4 it is a uh, minor um, jolts or minor movement which is recorded by the uh, instruments of recording earthquakes then uh, higher than 5.5 uh, to 6 uh, magnitude are in a little in a slightly uh, can cause slight damages like cracks and crevices can come up into your structure and a slight shaking or movement can be felt uh by uh, you know not only by the instrument can uh, it record it can also be felt by the humans then um more than 6.1 to 6.9 may cause a damage in a very populated areas if the you know if the structure is not in accordance to earthquake uh, resilient buildings co building codes uh then more than uh, 7.9 uh, uh, of seven, more than 7 to 7.9 um, it is a major earthquake and it can cause us severe damages okay serious damages can happen on your structure uh then you have more than 8 uh, magnitude that is great earthquake and can totally uh, you know destructive near the epicenters it is a very destructive uh, type of earthquake and uh, at the epicenter it has the maximum number of uh, you know losses that can it can happen so it happens once a year or you know once in every 5 to 10 years okay so this is an image of you know earthquakes that uh, you know distribution of epicenters uh, that can happen in and around uh, 
Indian subcontinent. So if you see here, the darker the colors are, they are, you know, uh, in, if you see the, you know, black stars, they are uh, telling you that they, uh, the earthquakes is more than, uh, you know, 6 point, uh, sorry, yes, more than 6.5 to 9 point uh, um, uh, uh, three. Rector, uh, sorry, uh, magnitude of earthquakes which has been happening. So, if you see all these dark spots are around on the Himalayan uh, belt or around this. So, this, this is a belt where you know we have a plate boundary, our Indian plate boundary, which is Kanugoji. Okay, so hence uh, coming to this, that mm -hmm. the, the entire Himalayan range is prone to earthquake. Uh, again, uh, some part of Gujarat is prone to earthquakes. Okay. So uh, apart from that, uh, certain interior part of you know, uh, the uh, Indian subcontinent is mildly affected by the earthquake. So it is not a very damaging sector in the interior part of the uh, country, but it is on the outer. So what you can do, uh, you know, in you know earthquake is that you can take shelter under a table so that you know the falling debris do not damage you. So earthquake early warning. So what are the basics of earthquake early warning? So in an earthquake, an erupting fault tends, uh, you know, uh, sends out different types of waves. So first moving uh, waves is P wave uh, is the first to arrive. So P wave is a, pop is a wave which comes out from the epicenter perpendicular, uh, even directly up to the epicenter, okay, on the focus. Okay, and uh, then... Uh, the next damaging cause is because of the uh, uh, a wave which came comes later that is s wave which is more on a surface manner and this uh, s wave uh, you know arrives later than that of p waves so uh, the sensors detect the p wave and immediately transmit the data uh, to an earthquake alert centers where the you know location and the size of the earthquake are determined and you know uh, updated as more data becomes available okay then a third place is the message from the alert center is immediately transmitted to your you know computer or mobile phones or you know or, um, uh, required authorities which calculates the expected intensity of the earthquake and uh, you know and magnitude of the shaking uh, of your lo location so that that informs you okay, what what is the magnitude of you know jolt that you that your location is going to face so a user receives receives a message like this is a you know screen of a computer that you know receives a you know strong shocking um, uh, shock waves which is going to be expected so uh, the message alerts the user to how many seconds uh, before the shaking of waves that is going to arrive their location and is expected the intensity of the shaking so the warning message also displays a map with a location of a epicenter the magnitude of the quake and the current position of the p and s waves okay so they can show you the p waves and s waves position and what is the magnitude that you're going to face in your computer or your device can see okay uh, this is how your seismograph records it so at you know uh, various timeline that it is crossing uh, that can be also recorded and transmitted to various authorities so the magnitude determines uh, you know the epicenter distance uh, height of you know uh, largest s waves and rector magnitude and all these things can be calculated on various cal you know mathematical calculations that are there by those who study earthquakes okay so we have discussed uh, the magnitude and how to study uh, the uh, you know, intensity and uh, you know from rector scale and we have done that so that's why i'm not covering it okay so we are because here in this lesson we are going to more you know have a focus on early warning system so India, uh, that is led by about 26 other uh, countries to develop an early earthquake warning system. Um, in uh, you know, uh, 2015, it had developed that, and uh, you know the scene. It has been seen that an earthquake early warning system helped uh, 
uh, you know many places like why we need it in our country and there is a success story that uh, tells that early warning system for earthquake has helped that recently that country like mexico city uh, the seismic uh, warning system is um, in place during the most recent magnitude of earthquake that is about 7.1 quake in september uh, 19 which was held uh, uh, which had its epicenter for about 75 miles from the country's capital so uh, the you know uh, successfully it gave the gave the people a crucial second to you know evacuate uh, you know flee vulnerable buildings uh, evacuate their buildings and prepare themselves if they are not able to evacuate then prepare themselves to protect themselves from any harm or any you know fatality that can come up so this uh, the like sky alert like millions of mexican turn into earthquake early warning um, app after you know deadly quake that had come up across uh, you know in for a, you know you know that killed about 450 people but not mexico is very densely populated uh, country but the sky alert system alarm system that has been installed in around their cities had alerted the country men to evacuate and take shelter for uh, you know uh, protecting themselves on earthquake we do not get much of a time to you know uh, reaction time for evacuation but rather taking up uh, in a shelter uh, tsunami a uh, sea wave of you know uh, location or distant origin that results from a large scale sea floor displacement associated with a large quake major sub, uh, submarine slides or explosion can also generate large harbor uh, you know tidal waves which can, has a ability to wash out the coastal regions so the working of tsunami warning system that is the network of you know seismic uh, you know monitoring uh, stations of sea floor detects presence of earthquake so seismic uh, monitoring station determines location and the depth of the uh, earthquake having potential to cause any tsunamis so any uh, resulting tsunamis are verified by in you know, a sea level uh, monitoring uh, station uh, such as dart uh, dart buoys uh, and you know tidal gauges that can record these uh, you know sea level uh, changes and uh, you know or vibrations in the uh, oceans so the type of tsunami warning system that we have is that international uh, warning system and national warning system okay so we have both in collaboration so detecting the method is like geological activities uh, wave activity and coastline activity so detecting a tsunami in is in three fold that is seismometer coastal tidal gauge and dart boy uh, uh, you know instruments can give these so let us the like current uh, you know uh, thing is that uh, there is a you know tsunami detector or the you know ocean flow which is there then we have which which has an acoustic link with the buoy uh, you know surface buoy it is re, uh, you know related to these and this transmit uh, the signal to the satellite and satellite transmit the signal back to the Uh, the surface the mainland uh, warning them that there is an upcoming uh, tsunami so the bottom pressure records like you know, digital quads uh, you know broadband uh, depth sensors in the main sensor elements are uh, and these you know, are continuously monitoring the pressure and uh, and of which you know it exceeds a certain threshold level and it is automatically recorded to the warning uh, centers so what happens is there is already a you know installation on the sea floor that sends the you know uh, uh, information to the uh, dart buoy dart buoy and from dart buoy there is an uh, signal that goes to the satellite and satellite sends the signal back to the uh, main surface okay so the advantage of dart buoy is that seismometer do not uh, measure tsunami so the tidal gauge do not uh, provide uh, you know direct measures of depth of ocean uh, you know uh, tsunami energy propagation so the dark buoy overcomes the uh, you know drawback of that both uh, you know uh, the uh, 
quake and the change in the water level that is going to be coming. The disadvantage of this is that uh, the, it is an extensive equipment, uh, high maintenance cost, maintenance cost is there and requires a multiple uh, communication link, like, you know, uh, from the sensor system to the buoy, buoy to the satellite. The, uh, but the uh, success story that is interesting to you know see here is that uh, India overtook a you know various um, ambitious project to set up a state of art you know tsunami and storm surge warning capacity in a short time of about thirty months. So this is achieved by the end of the uh, year two thousand seven. So the post uh, two thousand. Uh, five uh, sorry post 2004 tsunami that had had a you know very uh, large devastation uh, you know misery caused to you know uh, orissa predominantly andhra uh, coastal region uh, had you know made uh, the country move to take these steps that it had took uh, 30 months to install these and uh, you know and they was tested in you know 2012 you know September 12, 2007 earthquake again, you know, over, you know, last three years, the system has been performing in a very well manner, giving a early warning system before the tsunami waves comes to the coast. The coastal settlements, especially the fishermen who are settled on the coastal region are you know, given these early warning and uh, it has turned out uh, that it had saved many lives in the country. So tsunami early warning uh, system areas of you no know, responsibility like uh, in, in international we are not only working in you know accordance with a uh, national uh, system but also in accordance with the uh, international system. Okay. Uh, so now talking about floods, we also require an early warning system for floods. So uh, IMD is responsible for flood, uh, you know, warning system, uh, you know, in the country. Uh, these are the charts which are showing you the National Flood uh, Commission uh, had estimated uh, various, you know, flood prone areas in the country. And uh, like, you know, Uttar Pradesh has about 24% area under flood. Uh, you know, uh, then you have uh, Assam uh, 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 comprises about 12%, 19% of the flood happens in Bihar. Then you have 11% happens in Odisha. Um, uh, about, you know, uh, Andhra Pradesh faces about 5% of the land uh, faces uh, uh, flood in Andhra Pradesh and so on. So the flood affected areas uh, that average and uh, maximum and annual areas that you know per million hectare that it gets affected uh with the you know floods and you know losses that happens due to you know uh, the ganjatic plains and brahmaputra plains flooding every year you know uh, flooding various districts over the country are you know uh, very you know, about like 40 percent you know 40 uh, district of our country is chronically affected by flood prone uh, of floods uh, causing large number of agricultural fields being damaged. Okay, so uh, the achievement in flood control measures uh, can be, you know, taken up like flood forecasting and warning system plays a you know, significant role in, you know, uh, uh, you know, reducing the losses of life and movable uh, properties during the flood. So. Uh, you know, uh, here the CWC, that is the uh, board, water board has about you know, 175 forecasting sites uh, that gives about, you know, uh, 666 numbers of forecast, uh, you know, where issues of, you know, during the monsoon period, these are issued that these areas are going to be flooded in the monsoon season. Uh, the flooding flood warning system is very important like still we are not able to you know overcome uh, the uh, the degree of losses we have reduced uh, the losses but we have still not been able to have a very very good success story as compared to that we have achieved in you know cyclone or in case of tsunamis right but uh, we, there is much more miles to go uh, when it comes to uh, flood warning system so using sonar uh, um, 
we can use a flood warning system and you know some uh, way of sonar mounted on the you know bridges and high frequency sounds uh, can be you know transmitted to the uh, you know satellite or you know a water monitoring uh, board and then it can be recorded and again it can be uh, issued as a warning system uh, through various uh, tools of you know disseminating the information okay uh, now uh, the areas that we uh, I'm, i've been telling you that uh, you know from, uh, flood forecasting stations uh, that is uh, been installed number of sites are like three in andhra 12 in um, assam two in bihar chatisgarh has 35 gujarat has three haryana has 14 jharkhand has two karnataka has two and you know maharashtra has 175 in total um, maharashtra has nine and in total uh, number of sites comes up to about 175 sites that has been installed with uh, you know uh, flood uh, forecasting stations okay uh now uh like uh we ha also because we have uh you know uh sharing treaty uh, water with many countries like nepal and bangladesh and also with china like Brahmaputra is coming from china so uh whenever there is a you know flood like situation so we have to have a collab a cooperation with various countries like nepal bangladesh and china to control the floods so uh, a bilateral you know for you know flood forecasting system has been developed by between the countries to you know monitor uh, regulate and assess the uh, upcoming floods in the lower reaches of the river this is all uh, about you know early warning system and we will again meet you for the next lecture have a nice day